Well, we're still using trig here, but we'll do it differently. I've got the measure of two sides here, and I'm going to use that to calculate the measure of the angle. That's going to be called inverse trig functions. Let's start with what we know. Relative to this angle A, green is the opposite, and the blue side is the adjacent, and this is the hypotenuse, which in this case we don't care about because it's not given. Let's stick with what we're given. We know our trig functions from last section. Toa, tangent, is opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of angle A is 10 over 22. Pretty straightforward. Now, we already know what the tangent, well, that's a number. Let's just pull up our calculator. And we could do it on this calculator, 10 divided by 22, or 5 divided by 11. Either way, we can see it's 0.45 repeating. That's the tangent of angle A. Now, if I ask myself, what number or what measure of an angle in degrees gives me a tangent of 0.45? That's a different question. So I'm going to need an upgrade in my calculator. I need this calculator, the one with the trig functions on it. Now, watch carefully. If I want to know what angle has a tangent of 0.4545, etc., I don't hit the tangent button. No, 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 no. I'm going to undo the tangent. This magic button here, the inverse button, gives me tan to the negative 1. Tangent to the negative 1 is the inverse tangent, and as long as I'm set in degrees, will tell me the correct angle. Ready? There it is. 24 and 4 tenths. It was that easy. So that measure, I can test this this way. Take this button off. I've got 24.4. I hit the tan button. There you go. So let's finish this out. That's the decimal. And of course, I found this to be the angle. Now your textbook's going to show you a slightly more confusing way to write this. They're going to say, well, the measure of angle A is the inverse tangent of 10 over 22. These two statements are equivalent. And honestly, I prefer the one on the left. It makes more sense. But this is the book's way of doing it. So if you do it this way, and again, you turn that 10 over 22 into a decimal, and then execute the inverse tangent, you will get this number. This time, the angle A is up here. We're finding its measure using our inverse trig. Just like last time, identify the sides. I've got an opposite, the adjacent's over here, and this is the hypotenuse. So of course, let me see, I need opposite and adjacent. That tells me this is the sine function. So I write it down. The sine of two numbers, the opposite and the adjacent. And that is Nani snoring in the background. So let's take, let's take our calculators. We can use a simple calculator here. I'll move it over here. 5 divided by 11. Whoa, now that looks familiar. Don't panic. The last exercise had the exact same decimal. That's just the author's lack of imagination. It is, it is the same decimal, but we're using a different function here. We'll expand it, move it over here like this, and I'm going to take the inverse sign, saying what angle gives me this measure. And there you go, 27 to the nearest tenth. I'm going to write the point zero. So I'm going to write it down. This is the decimal, and I get a 27 degree angle. Now, if you wanted to write it the other way, that your textbook does, you'd say the measure of angle A, that's this angle, is the inverse sine of the opposite over the hypotenuse, or 5 over 11. And again, that's the decimal, 0.4545, and take the inverse function, and you're done. 
Now let's find the measure of angle A, given our two sides. Well, like last time, we label opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. I mean, you do that in your head, really. Getting rid of this one, we're not using it. I've got a function that's adjacent over hypotenuse that tells me cosine. So cosine of this angle, the angle at A, is obviously 7 over 12. And pull up my, now where's my calculator? There it is. 7 divided by 12. And there's my decimal. And again, uh, yeah, I could write this down, I suppose. But you're going to keep it in the register of your calculator. And you need the calculator upgrade. And again, we're going to take the inverse cosine. Because I'm asking what, or the cosine of what angle in degrees gives me this number. Inverse button. Cosine to the minus 1. And there you go. 54 and 3 tenths. So it looked like that. Now, we could have written it the other way and consistent with the book. The measure of angle A is the inverse cosine of 7 over 12, and therefore it's the inverse cosine of this decimal, and we get the same thing.